business growth. These are the 12 things that every business leader should know. First of all, negotiation. You gotta care, but not that much. It's really important when you're going into any negotiation that you care about the deal, but not so much that you're willing to give it all away. When you're desperate, when you're needy, when you're emotionally attached to that goal, they can smell it. They can tell. It's an unconscious vibe that you put out and that they pick up. So when you go into any negotiation, you got to care, but not that much. Knowing that you have an infinite supply of possibilities, and yes, you would absolutely love to do this deal with them, but if it's not going to work, if the energy's not right, you know that something better will replace it. Now, with that said, it's also really important to know who you're dealing with. Just like in poker, if you can read and understand and you know body language, the non-verbal communication aspect of any interaction, communication, negotiation, deal-making process, then you actually have a superpower that most people at the table don't have. Especially if you understand it from a conscious awareness point of view and perspective. You see, most people do get it on an unconscious level, meaning they pick up on cues and signs and maybe a warning sign goes off in them, they see red flags, they pick up on incongruencies or inconsistencies between what you're saying, what you're doing, energy, behavior, that sort of thing. But they may not actually be able to articulate what it is that they're picking up on. So if you were willing to invest in some training, and I would recommend an NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming Training, because it hands down teaches you the absolute most efficient breakdown of how to read body language, voice inflection, eye patterns, skin tone, skin color, and pretty much every law enforcement officer or agency is well skilled in this. I actually covered some of this in an FBI training that I did some years ago. It is a really powerful tool and when you're in business you want to have as many tools as you can in your back pocket so to speak. So when you're at the table and you're putting deals together you come from a place of strength. Okay, so the art of negotiation really truly is an art and a science and you can study up on it by really getting to know human behavior and then bringing that into your leadership role in your business and the art of the deal when you're at the table. All right, so that's number one. Number two is when you're doing any sort of business, you want to make sure that you're talking to the person that is the decision maker. I learned this the hard way when I first got into business many years ago. I took a meeting with a company and I went through an entire afternoon <laughs> pitching a service and explaining and expressing and engaging and delivering only to find out that the people at the table had zero power in making any kind of a decision. Guess who that falls back on? That falls back on me. Well, let me tell you, I never made that mistake again. So only be willing to sit down with the person that can write the check. Because if they can't sign the contract and commit financially, then you're wasting your time. There's absolutely no way that you can articulate to that person as a middleman for them to go back and then articulate it with the same level of clarity, passion, enthusiasm, to the person that does make the decision. And then if there is are questions that come back or 
any pushback points, they're not going to be able to speak to that. Only you can. So only be willing to sit down with the decision maker. Now, if you're dealing with large corporations and you have to sort of like wade your way through the layers of people, I would recommend that you keep the essence of the deal that you're working on to yourself until you're in front of that that person that can make the final decision. So the people that are in front of you, you can develop the relationship and you can give them snippets, but my recommendation is not to give the whole enchilada. Basically, don't waste that energy until you get in front of the person that can say yes, all right? Next is when you shake hands, know that a deal is a deal and then keep your word. Now we live in quite the litigious society in the United States and so many times what happens is people go back on what the decision was that they made. Maybe they have buyer's remorse or perhaps the state of mind that they were in when they went into the deal is not where they're at later. And so they want to get out of the deal, but they don't know how to do that or they've signed something. So they just find an out. And usually the legal route, a lawsuit is typically their way out. So when you, when you engage in something, then definitely be willing to engage full on. Give your best, give your all, see it through. Unless, of course, the other side is also in the same place where they would like to exit and then just create an exit strategy and agree on that. All right, next is to stand up for yourself. There's some pretty sharp negotiators out there and everybody wants to feel like the, they got the best deal, right? When they're walking away from the table, each person that was at the table wants to feel like they got the best deal for them. And so when you're in that negotiation, you have to stand up for yourself, especially when you're putting together a project or a, or a relationship that's going to evolve over time. If you can't stand up for yourself initially when you're putting the deal together and you come across like, this pushover or this person that they can manipulate or that will cave in or give in or comes from a place of fear, then they will walk all over you for the entire duration of the contract or the project and you will be absolutely miserable. There's nothing worse than losing integrity with yourself. All right, next is to know your opponent. Now I touched a little bit on this earlier on when I was talking about reading body language and really getting in there and understanding human behavior so you can see all of the nonverbal clues. It's also useful to know who that person is as a person. Who are they being? Do you like their energy? I was at a presentation today, it was a luncheon, and we had four business leaders at the front of the room on a panel, and there was a lot of discussion around how they had built their companies over time. All four of them worked on a global level. Now there was a great deal of talk about how they have all these systems in place and how you know, it's, it's a struggle and they work really, really hard and they just, you know, it's just, you're just going to have to suck it up and just go through hard times and, and you know, that there's never enough time. So, you know, it was going on and on about all of these sort of mundane issues. And what I felt very strongly was that there was never any conversation around who you're being like who what is the energy is there a connection between who you are and who you have on your team is there an energetic alignment between you and your clients and this is a really important key right here because at the end of the day you can do lots and lots of work together lots and lots of efforting but if if you really don't know one another if you really aren't 
connecting, you know, those points of connection, then it's not going to be fulfilling and it's certainly not going to be as fun as it could be. And look, you work a lot. We all work. We all spend a great deal of our hours daily and weekly and in our lifetime at work. So wouldn't you want it to be fun? Like, why wouldn't you, right? All right, so then next is details. Now, there are different kinds of thinkers. So there are big picture thinkers that then you can give them the details later. And there are detail-oriented people that once they get the details in line, then they can scale it up and they can look at the big picture. Not everybody's wired to look at it from both directions. So you really want to find out, is this person a big chunker to small detail person? Is that how they relate to information? Is that how they relate to conversation, dialogue, meeting agenda, moving the needle forward on execution? Or are they a small detail oriented person that kind of gets overwhelmed by the big picture because it's going to depend on how they relate spatially to information as to how you actually have a conversation with them or how you develop a project with them. You know, do you present the big picture first and then talk about the details later? Do you go in with the the pitch or the negotiation and get into the small details right away. You have to understand how people chunk information. And so it's worth getting to know a little bit about that person to get a sense of how to present, how to relate and how to converse. Okay. Next is do not beg. Look, you are valuable. What you have to offer is worthwhile. You provide energy to the business world. You provide a service to the professional world and to businesses. You make a difference just being you. And so then by the offerings that you have, that has value, you see. So when you go into any negotiation or any project, don't beg. Just don't beg. They either can see it and align with it or they can't. And if it's not right for you because they can't recognize the value, then be willing to walk. I promise you, if you're willing to say no to a client that isn't a fit, if you're willing to let go of a project that is going to cost you your ROI or it's going to suck the life out of you because it really isn't in alignment with your potential or, or how big you can actually go, then you're going to be miserable. Again, you're just not going to be happy. And happiness is the key to everything. Uh, you know, if you're only in business for the money, then get out of the business because you could be in a business that totally fulfills you and you would have a completely different experience in in your life that would be so much more rewarding all right okay so next is you have to believe in what you sell what you provide i guess that kind of parlays off of my last point you know if you're in business just for the money and it's really not a, a desire or a passion for you, then you might want to rethink what you're doing with your life and what that really means to you to, to be able to connect who you are, your gifts, your talents, and take them out into the world. You have to believe in what you're selling, in what you're offering, in what your company is about, or you're going to actually cut off its potential before it really gets off the ground. It's really important that you do some self-evaluation on this. I would love to see you be happy and the best way to create that happiness is to truly 
connect emotionally and believe in what it is that you're selling because then you sell from the heart you see and it becomes effortless and this is what i'm always talking about about ease and joy and flow in your business which leads me to my next point about expand your thinking so keep going beyond what you're currently doing you know sometimes when the deals don't flow in maybe it's because you're focusing too small maybe what it is that you need to do is you need to think bigger maybe you need to go after some bigger stuff because you have more to offer than what you're actually acknowledging look at your annual strategic plan and really look at what those numbers are compared to last year or the year before and what your capacity is for growth i would bet that you can probably do more let's say that differently you can probably create more and generate more in the way of expanding your offerings and expanding your reach and your clients and your and your service which then generates more revenue than what you probably have thought is possible so you might be actually keeping yourself small which slows down the deal flow and certainly has an impact on the quality of your deals and the quality of the people that you're dealing with all right so next is thinking big which is a play off of my previous point about expanding your thinking you know it takes as much energy to go after a let's say seven or eight figure contract as it does to go after a five or six figure contract it takes as much energy to connect to the people it takes as much energy to put together the platform and the program and it takes as much energy to sit down at the table and negotiate the deal and it probably takes less energy to deliver on it because when you start to play that bigger game you start to put processes and systems and people in place to help you so that your team is growing your organization is flourishing and there's a different kind of buzz happening in your company all right which leads me to something very very important and that is your passion 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 so recently I was at a seminar where I was a speaker and there was someone else that was delivering that got up on the stage and said, I really love what I do and I'm super passionate about it. But that's not how she said it. She said, I really love what I do and I'm, I'm super passionate about it. And no one in the room believed her so when you are espousing these kinds of words then show it in your voice inflection express it in your body language you know me i'm just talking with my hands and i'm all over the place because i have a lot of energy that i conjure up and i'm a very passionate business person so i really like to express that and i find that as i do that I connect with more people that are, are similar and all of my clients are super expressive. So it makes for some really fun consulting projects, especially when I go into other cultures and you know, maybe they're a little more conservative. When I'm more outgoing like this, it brings, it brings it out in them and they actually enjoy themselves and have a little more fun. Okay energy so how you run your energy is how you do everything now earlier on i was talking about a luncheon i was at today where we had these four business leaders on a panel talking about how they'd grown their businesses and every bit of the conversation was about the mundane world of efforting and taking action and i'm all about taking action however it has to be inspired action and so the energy that you're running is actually what's creating the relationship dynamics and the way you go about doing your business it's like it, it, it cultivates your attitude and it creates the connection points that you have to your goals and your numbers and your outcomes all right 
All right, so last but not least is this. Never be satisfied. Now, that may sound like you're ungrateful, but I'm not coming from that place. What that means to never be satisfied is, let me digress. So our unconscious mind is hardwired to consistently seek more and more. It's designed that way. So when we are satisfied and we stagnate from that satisfaction and we don't keep growing and we don't keep reaching for more and we don't keep expanding, then we actually, it's like we turn off that flame inside of ourselves that gives our lives meaning. So never be satisfied. You can, you can appreciate what you have, count your blessings, be grateful, but please never be satisfied. You are designed, you are hardwired to consistently seek more and more. So keep seeking. It's in the contrast of seeing what you don't want that you discover what you do want. And when you see what you do want, go after it because you are infinite and you can expand beyond any possibility that you could currently imagine because there's so much more that you haven't even thought of yet. And so what else is possible? It's, it's a wonderful journey. So thank you so much. My name is Deborah Peters. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for liking and sharing. Stick some comments below. I'd love to know how you're enjoying the channel and we will connect soon. And there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. If you hit that, then when I upload a new video, you'll get a little notice and you can keep on top of the content that I'm producing. All right, you have a great day. Ciao.